By far the most popular request I have received is to provide more information on how to build the $5 trainer. So here it is, or something like that. I'll try to keep this video as short and information dense as I can. But remember that the $5 trainer was intended to inspire people and to demonstrate the freedom and possible simplicity of designing and scratch building your own aircraft using affordable building materials and modern electronics. So I'm not here to give you PDF plans for you to copy or anything, but I will show you the basic steps that I used to build this cool low-wing airplane using the same building methods and materials used to make the $5 trainer airplane. This airplane is made out of one $5 block of white Home Depot insulation foam, a little Dollar Tree foam board, and some thin plywood from Ace Hardware. I also use a ton of hot glue and packaging tape. Roughly cut out a block of foam from which the dimensions of your desired wing will fit inside. I cut it out by holding a hot wire by hand. The wire only gets hot in between the leads where the current flows. I started off building wings using the arm and wing method of folding over Dollar Tree foam board, which is cheaper, but ever since I finally decided to start trying hot wire cutting, I've never gone back. All you need is a thin guitar string and a 12 volt battery. You could use like a car battery or a 3 cell lipo or some other power supply too. It should pull about 2 to 4 amps depending on if you use all or half of the guitar string. The shorter the wire, or the higher the voltage, the more current is drawn and the hotter the wire gets and the faster it will cut. To make the templates, choose whatever airfoil you want. I chose a Clark Y airfoil because it's a good classic airfoil that is nice and thick and easy to cut. I looked it up on airfoiltools.com and took a screenshot of it. Then I put it into a word processor and used the page ruler to scale the picture to my desired cord length, and then print. Then I cut the airfoil shape out of the paper and glued it onto some fancy plywood. Spray adhesive or glue sticks work well. Then cut that shape out of the wood with a saw of some sort, and then sand out your imperfections. Sandpaper stretched over a block of wood works well too. Now that you have made your templates, you can secure these on the side of your block of foam and cut it out. It's easier to do shorter sections at a time, and so I cut the wing in half first. I like to cut the big surfaces first, and then do the leading and trailing edges carefully. <laughs> mm, burning foam. I wanted my wing to have some dihedral in it, and so I cut a small angle in the joining edges of the wings. Covering the wing with packaging tape is an excellent way to reinforce the foam wing and make it super smooth and rigid. I taped each half individually and then joined them together with some hot glue and some more tape. To make the fuselage, sketch what shape you want and cut it out. We just ended up using the handheld hot wire again. The hot wire leaves a nice finish, but it's very hard to cut a straight line. It's important to have a nice solid forward mounting place to mount your motor onto. This plywood provides a lot of surface area to glue to the foam. This airplane could just be hand launched and landed and it does not need landing gear. Landing gear just adds weight and complexity. But I really like it sometimes because landing and taking off is actually my favorite part of flying these things. I took some aluminum bar from the Home Depot, bent it, drilled holes in it, and bolted it to some fancy plywood to glue under the wing. I have found that hot wiring airfoils for the tail is not worth the trouble. It is easier to make the tail out of Dollar Tree foam board. Just draw the shape that you want and cut it out. I highly recommend buying a huge pack of razor blades. There's nothing more frustrating than a dull razor blade. Trust me, just throw it out and use a new one. I like to remove the paper backing and replace it with packaging tape. Control surfaces are cut out with a straight edge and bevel the edges so that it can hinge in both directions. I've got two pieces that fit well together and are straight and so if you wanted to just put a piece of tape down here it would hinge very well in this direction but it doesn't have any relief angle so it can't bend the other direction without pulling this side apart so what you have to do is you have to cut a little bit of an angle right here on one of these edges well, i'm going to do this side because this has more surface to hold on to it's just going to keep a constant angle and just kind of score this there we go and then just cut the excess. It can be a good idea to poke skewers through the fuselage and rubber band the tail on, but I just hot glue the tail on this time. A high wing design may be able to just sit flat on top of the fuselage, but a low wing airplane is a little bit more tricky. I put the airfoil templates that we cut out earlier on either side of the fuselage and cut out a spot to put the wing. Then I poked some sticks through the fuselage so that the wing can be held on with rubber bands. Ailerons were initially made from strips of foam board but then I decided to cut out the ailerons from the wing itself and hinge them with tape. All the RC electronics were glued to the exterior surfaces, but they could be inlaid if you just wanted to do that. The 
instrumental. I connected the control surfaces with bent and cut music wire and standard control horns. And the battery is just velcroed onto the side here. The only other things I can think of is to make sure that the wing and the horizontal stabilizer are at approximately the same angle pointing forwards. And as with all conventional configuration airplanes, the airplane has to be balanced just past the leading edge of the wing, technically about 25% of the cord from the leading edge to 33%, I'd say. The best way to learn is to do, and make mistakes and learn from them. Problem solving is fun. I just upgraded my radio, and now I can buddy box. I'm going to use this airplane as a trainer to try these new features out in Carly, who by the way helped build this plane and many others, and also shot like all my videos. I'll also be using this airplane as a test bed to try 3D printed vortex generators and see how it affects a stall speed and tape yarn on the wings, so stay tuned for that. You practice those maneuvers and real airplanes. That looks really scary. It's pretty scary. I didn't think that they were that intense. All right, let's get up there. Do a stall. Rudder. Woo! We're gonna get you. <laughs> Well, shoot. There's my servo repair. So, aft elevator, full throttle, protect your little fragile nose wheel. Wow, that just kind of picked up. And then get it kind of next to the ground, let it come down the valley, and then bring it in nice and stabilized. Nice and slow, bring in some power, add some elevator going up the hill, and grease it. Oh yeah, grease it. 